So in this video, we're going to be creating what you see here. We're looking at a custom blog layout. And if you really love the tutorials we're bringing, before we jump in, I just asked, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell if you really love us. That way you get notifications as soon as the videos come out so you can be the first one to give it a thumbs up. Appreciate you and let's get into the tutorial. All right, so what we've got set up here is all of the pages, or at least a few pages, of the PR firm layout that Elegant Themes has put out inside of the Divi Builder, or the Divi theme. You can see up here, you know, we've got the home page, we've got an about page, we've got the blog and the contact page, and the header and the footer are all standard. We'll jump into the back end, just so I can show you what we're working with here. You know, we've got WordPress 5.4.2, and we'll go over into themes. I'll show you the version of Divi as well. So with Divi, we're using 4.4.8, which is the current release as of the time that I'm filming this video. So June of 2020. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to create a custom layout to fit into this theme. And I'm going to show you and walk you through each one of those steps. So again, we're going to go into the front end. Uh, we've got the blog post page or the blog page that has... Um, just the generic layout, it's got, you know, these posts that I put in here is just two generic posts. They're just filler content. And we're going to create the blog look, the blog layout. So let's go into Divi first, and we're going to go into the theme builder. And this is where all of our work is, is really going to happen. And the first thing we're going to do here is add a new template. And we're going to tie it into the blog page itself. So this template, and we're going to click add custom body and build from or build custom body. And what we're going to do is tie in the blog page layout from the PR theme. So we're going to use a pre-made layout here. It's going to load up the library. And then from here, we're going to be able to search. So we'll click over here in the search bar. We're going to type in PR and hit enter. And that's going to give us the PR layout. So we've got this blog page, which is the, the front end news page, right? It's got the, the blog grid in it. We're going to load that up, click on it, and hit use this layout. And it will import into this page. So it's done here. And it's going to reload with the layout inside of the Visual Builder. So cool, it's gone. It's loaded up. We've got the title of the page here. We've got the subscribe button. You know, we've got this custom slider. What they did here is Elegant Themes put in a post slider. And then over here, it's just a post list. So it's the blog settings and it's set up as a list. If we had more posts, we could do more with it. We could offset this. You know, we could set this as the main one. Maybe it's got two here, and then we could offset those. And, and that way, there's not any repeating. But, you know, for this example, we've only got two posts or two blog posts that are set up. So this will work just fine. So this is the blog page, right? We're going to hit um, Command on the Mac and S so that we can save it. We're going to hit Save This Layout, and then we're going to exit. We're going to hit Save here, and that's going to save this blog layout right here. And we'll load up the front end. So what you saw before was like the generic Divi blog page with our blog, yeah, blog grid page with nothing on it. No, um, nothing special, just no layout to it. It's what Divi has designed by default. Now when we click the blog page, you see this layout. So this whole layout's loaded. And I'll jump into the back end to show you where we assign that. Um, the real key is under settings and reading. This is where you assign your blog page. So static, you set up your home page, and then whatever page you're using as the blog, you want to set it as your post page. That way, when we come over here into the theme builder and we assign a layout to the blog page, that layout's going to be assigned with what WordPress sees as the blog layout. So that covers, you know, the, the very first bit. That gives us, when we click on blog, it gives us the layout. But what happens when we click on the actual post? You're going to see just, again, a very generic layout. <clears throat> nothing special, um, <laughs> just nothing unique about it, right? <clears throat> That's okay, because what we're going to do here is add a new template. And this one we're going to assign to all posts. And we'll hit Create Template. And once again, we'll click Add Custom Body and Build 
You could build from a custom body or you could add from the library if you've already got one. In this case, I'm actually going to use the blog layout that we just imported as kind of the base and then I'll tweak it. So I'm just gonna copy from a template. So then it takes what we just did for the blog grid and adds it into the custom body of the post. And then we'll click on it to edit it. We'll click the pencil, it'll load up the front end and we'll be able to edit this layout. So we've got this layout for the blog post loaded. And this is exactly what we just saw a second ago, right? So what we're going to do is this whole section, we're actually gonna remove it because this is just highlighting posts that we have. So we're gonna delete that. So now we've got this grid here and this is where our blog content is actually going to go. But before we get to that, Let's get the header done correctly. So we'll hit the, the row settings and see that this actually has two columns. I don't want the button here, so I'm gonna delete that second column. That way this stretches all the way across. And then what we're gonna do here is click on this text. We've got this as the H1 tag, and I really want this to be the title of the blog post. So what I'm gonna do, we've got the heading one, right? You can delete this and we're gonna click over on this dynamic content and we're gonna select the post archive title. The key here is just gonna drop it in as paragraph text. So what we wanna do is hit this settings gear. We're gonna edit the dynamic content and before we're gonna drop an H1 tag and then after we're gonna close an H1 tag. Now what that's gonna do is give you the control and the look of the heading one tag while also making sure that your search engine optimization is tight because you've got the H1 tag that Google is looking for right here at the top of the page and it's the page title. So we'll hit the plus symbol, we'll hit okay. Elegant Themes is gonna pull this dynamic content in. So you can see here, your dynamic post title will be display here. That's really cool, that's good to know. You know, This right here in the next section is just the blog settings. We do not need this. What we wanna do is delete that and then we're gonna add another module in. And it's going to be this post content module. So what we're doing is making sure, first and foremost, the settings and the spacing inside the row aren't, um, there's no padding inside of there. So I go under here and I eliminate the padding. That way everything is gonna to stretch to the end of the row and everything's gonna to go to the top. And that just makes it so that everything fits well within your, in your space. So everything's gonna take up the 100% of the grid. And that's the way we want it. You can play with the spacing if you have different needs, different layout ideas that you wanna do. But you know, generally speaking, that's kind of what I do as a, as a rule of thumb. And so the next thing I wanna do is set all of the style for the post content. That way you can just edit your blog posts inside of Gutenberg very easy, just like using Word. And it's great for your clients because they don't have to come into the front end. They don't have to do any special styling. They can do it all in the back end, drop images, put content together. And that actually, the, the limitations of that as far as the design and using Gutenberg is better for search engine optimization because it's gonna make them structure their blog posts a whole lot more effectively. So we're gonna jump into this title. I wanna come over here and go to A1 and see the font. So we're using Hebo as heavy, and that means I'm gonna take that same font and bring it down here. And I'm gonna go down into headings, and I'm going to change this to the same font of what we have up at the top. And you can decide, you know, if you want to make it all uppercase, if you want to keep it regular, you know, if we want to change the, the font size, we definitely probably want to maintain the difference on different screen sizes. But we'll go ahead and let's say we'll do a 34 here. And then we'll come up to H2. We'll select the same font and we'll go up to maybe uh, 28. Actually, let's go to 30. And then we'll go to an H3. We'll change the font here as well. That way all of the headings match. We're gonna take it up to a 28. So everything gets a little bit smaller as we go down and we'll go to H4. And just for the purposes of the video, I'm just gonna stop right here. You know, This will be the last one I'm gonna do for the H4. We'll go up just a bit. And that kind of works, right? I mean, very rarely are you gonna have any more headings than, than that. So that kind of covers this part. Then we're gonna go into under text. And 
you can make this text whatever you want. You know, Open Sans is the default one. We could do um, <clears throat> Lotto if we wanted. We'll change the font up just a bit. We can go up to, you know, maybe like a, a 16 font. Looks great on, uh, on desktop. I think I want to get some a little bit more space between these words or between the lines. Yeah, not a fan of that. So we're going to leave this just like that. Kind of dig the color. Maybe go a little bit lighter than dark black, you know, right about there. And then we're going to change the, the link color as well. We'll change the font over to the same thing. That way those match. And, you know, let's... Um, Let's close out of here and we're gonna go into this section background because I know how elegant things works. They drop a regular picture and then they put these, um, these gradients over it. So I actually wanna match this color. So I'm just going to copy this color and then we'll go back down here, open up the design for the post content again, go back into the link and we will paste that color here. Now fonts, let's say we're going we go heavy with it. So now the fonts really stick out. They really stand up against the regular text. You know that there's an action that needs to be taken. We'll go back in here, back in the text, and let's say the quotes, you know, just in case you're gonna do a quote, I would match the, the color, not, well, not the text color, but the actual block border. So that'll make that match as well. And then you can continue to do really any other styling, you know. So if we needed to come down here and let's say unordered lists, you can put them in the middle, you can change, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. We can go up to 16. We can do line height a little bit more. We can indent the whole thing if we wanted. We can copy the styles, take them over here, and actually paste the styles for the um, for the numbers as well. And let's go down here and look at the indention. Make it so that they line up. <clears throat> and that kind of works. I mean, that's something very, very simple. You know, and if you wanted, you could actually style all of your images as well. So if we wanted to have um, the actual images in here, we could put a border around it. So if we wanted all of our images to have that softer look to them, we could do that. So you could add a border if you wanted. You don't have to. Um, in this case, we're not going to, but you could add drop shadows. You can even come over here and add custom CSS if you needed. But in this case, we're just going to leave it the way it was. We're going to take off that shadow because it kind of overlays here with the text. And we're just gonna say this is this is good. This is this is what we want. So now we've got the dynamic title up here. We've got the header, content, all the text is styled. We've got this down here. Um, one last thing I would change here, just to show you a little bit more about dynamic content, is the background. So in this layout, they've already got this image in place. I'm going to, rather than having just a regular image in here, what I would do is delete the image and do the featured image back here. That way, this looks a little bit different every single time. You've got the, the custom featured image that you're gonna put, that's gonna show up in the grid, will also show up here. And then I'll hit save. We'll close out of this. We'll go back into the front. We'll hit refresh, and you're gonna see a whole new layout. It's gonna look very, very different, right? So we've got our name here. We've got the featured image. We've got the text from the, the blog post. And that's it. You know, if we go, if we were to go into the blog again, so this was this post, we're gonna go and load up the other one. That way you can see kind of what it looks like. So we'll go under this one, and when we load up that blog post, you'll also see new title, new background image, new content. So they all look a little bit different. And that's, it's that simple really to build, uh, to build a very basic blog, to get a custom layout here. And then the beauty of it is that whenever you go to edit your post, all you gotta do is hit edit post. You don't have to mess with the layout and the design anymore because you've got dynamic content in those places. So, you know, if we were, if we were gonna go in here, we could just add something new, 
add an image below, um, pick the media library, select from an image that's here, add this in, and then we can just continue to go down. We could add more, um, more text. So pull a little lorem ipsum text. What we're gonna do here is add in a heading Conclusion, we've got our text, and then let's duplicate this. And we're going to bring it down, and we're going to also duplicate this. Um, we'll bring it below the conclusion. So now we've got a little bit more data here. We've got the image, we've got the intro, we can hit update, and then we can go back into the front, view the post, and it's that easy to make the updates. You know, we've now got the top, the title, we come down, we've got our image here that has the radius around it. We've got our conclusion that we just added. It looks great, right? Very, very easy, very to do, uh, very easy to do, very simple to manage, and even better, as a developer, you can build the framework and allow your clients to update all their posts, add new blog posts, do whatever they need to do really, really easily in, in a format that they're very used to. So thanks again for being here for another video. I really hope this topic was very useful for you. If you love this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you really, truly love what we're doing, turn that bell on, hit it, get the notifications when we put out new videos because we're dropping stuff just like this pretty frequently. So we appreciate you. Leave a comment below if you're using this type of stuff in your own projects. That way we can go check it out. So have an awesome week. Take care of yourself, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next video.